Right, hello and welcome to another Sales Pop Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeline of CRM. And today I'm delighted to be joined from a very hot, hot England right now, um, London, Casper Berry. How are you doing today? I'm good. I'm hot. <laughs> yeah, the um, the UK is suffering a heat wave right now. Well, suffering, enjoying, depends on your point of view, I guess. <laughs> suffering for me. Uh, yeah. Casper yeah. um, is a motivational speaker, um, a, an author. He is a former professional poker player. So we wanted to talk today about risk taking and decision making, because obviously they're key parts of when you're uh, playing poker and gambling. But um, in the context of selling and sales, they are obviously key parts to that. And, and sales is the one uh, discipline in an organization that has the most at risk. You know, most of them have at, at risk, uh, you know, compensation, etc. And, uh, you know, normally it's a, a, you know, it's easy outcome for them. It's either a yes or a no. But getting to that yes or a no requires some risk taking and some decision making. So, um, you know, Casper, when you talk about risk taking, can you just just give me some context what you mean by that. Uh, for me, it all comes down to resource allocation. Mm -hmm. um, and I think what we all want as decision makers, because I see every decision as an investment decision, as a mm -hmm. resource allocation decision, you know, whether you're hiring a car or investing your time in a relationship or picking up the phone and, uh, and calling a subject, a client, um, you're allocating your scarce resource. Could be money, could be time, could be status, reputation, standing that's there on the line. Um, and what do we want every time we allocate a scarce resource? We want return on investment. Mm -hmm. We want the most bang for our buck, uh, value for money, whatever it is. Um, so for me, genuinely, in a, in a non-pretentious way, all human beings are making decisions and effectively, to some degree, taking risk every single moment of the day. And it's a question of are we in control of that process or is that process in control of us? So do you think that uh, the people, regardless of what they're approaching, do you think that people um, value their own time and resources enough? I think they do more than they used to. I mean, I think there's a greater understanding and awareness of all of what I talk about. Nothing to do with me, but in mm -hmm. the 15 years that, that I've been doing it, I think we, we did used to take this much more for granted. And that, that's, that applies to the macro and the micro. So what mm -hmm. I mean by that is, 2008 made us much more aware of uncertainty, which sits mm -hmm. at the heart of all of this than, right. than we were, you know, before then. Um, but I think, from the point of view of sales, I'm not going to stress at this point. I'm not a salesperson. Sure. Person, mm -hmm. Not talking about sales per se. Um, from the point of view of sales, I think people were always aware of it to a certain extent, but they've become more aware of it. There's been a great spate of. Uh, decision-making literature, as I'm sure you're aware, from Malcolm Gladwell's Blink in 2005, mm -hmm. through Thinking Fast, Thinking Slow, and, and a whole load of other books. So people are more aware now that every minute counts. We live in a time-poor world, and it's about working as efficiently and as effectively as possible. Mm -hmm. and, and what I'm talking about is, you know, whatever you're doing, sales or leadership or, or you know, managing an organization, uh, you're allocating resources. And the question is, are you making the best decisions, the right decisions, to get you to wherever it is that you want to get to as quickly and efficiently as possible? And, and the honest truth is that for a lot of people, the answer to that is probably no. That's okay. How do we close that gap? Yeah. So, um, so I think uh, uh, fundamental to this is, you know, maybe some people's concept of risk is that it's almost like knee jerk or something you know you just suddenly make a decision to take a risk but what you're talking about is you, know, you actually manage that process and you analyze it and you decide and you weigh the consequence or you weigh the pros and cons of taking that and and uh, risk and allocating resource to it so it's a much more thought through process is that right yeah yeah a couple of points so the first thing is risk has nothing to do with jumping out of airplanes mm -hmm. you know it can be I don't know, setting up your own business. But again, it, it needn't be anything to do with that. Um, you know, when I talk to organizations, people tend to talk about the middle ground, like, for example, uh, hiring someone, you know, is a risk, but we have mm -hmm. to do it. Mm -hmm. um, uh, choosing your location, what, what sector, what market. Um, being uh, honest is, is something that people have talked about recently quite a lot as being a big risk that we can take. You know, people want to do it. They want to be able to take that risk. But sometimes just doing that, just putting your hand up and challenging the status quo can be a big risk in organizations. So that's the first thing. Risk is a, it sits on a continuum. The second thing is you're absolutely right. What I advocate is not that we go around with calculators falling out sure. of our back pockets, right, and, and, and abacuses and calculating everything, but that we have an awareness at a fundamental, of, fundamental level of how risk works. So in its most basic form, if you toss a coin, 
and I give you an even money return. So for every dollar you invest in this, when you're right, when you get heads, I'm going to give you a dollar plus a dollar back. Uh, and when you're wrong, I'm going to take your dollar. We can agree that in the long run there, you're just breaking even. Okay? Right. That's, that's a standard you know, resource allocation calculation. Mm -hmm. If I give you 10 to 1 on the toss of that coin, I know that sounds like gambling terminology. I don't <laughs> actually like the term gambling because if you're playing poker professionally, for me, you're not gambling. You're, resort you're taking a series of calculated right. risks. You're, winning, you're making a return in the long run. If I give you 10 to 1, what's happening now? 50% of the time, you're still losing your dollar. And 50% of the time, you're getting your dollar back plus ex an extra $10. Okay, so you are now making, if we do the math, a 450% return on that, on mm -hmm. that calculation. But here's the key, you're still losing 50% of the time. Uh, and that can lead to all sorts of interesting um, uh, conclusions. Like number one, you can lose in the short term and make a massive return on investment in the long term. Number two, you could actually increase what we might call your failure rate, your mm -hmm. negative rate, and actually make a greater long-term return. And here's a simple explanation as to why that might be. And this is particularly true for sales, but it is for all sorts of things. Everyone's risk averse, right? Everyone's loss averse. No one wants to fail. Mm -hmm. And therefore, everyone's piling into the opportunities that have the greatest success rate because no one wants to hear a no. Again, right. sales are for everything. Mm -hmm. And therefore, there are whole unexplored uh, areas and opportunities and parts of the market where you're going to have to take more risk. You're going to have to be prepared to fail more. You're going to have to have more iterations in order to hit the long run. You're going to actually experience more pain but actually, you might be able to increase your return on investment, which is, again, just a technical word for productivity, efficiency, mm. getting more or less. Okay? So, again, in its simplest forms, that's how this, can, that's how this sort of works at a fundamental level. So, um, from what you're saying there, then it appears that people need to have the appetite or the resilience to be able to go through that process. And as you say, maybe it is in the short term, maybe it's taking a lot more loss in the short term for yeah. the longer term. So, you have to calcu calculate out your appetite to see that through, right? Yes. Yeah, there's all sorts of things. It's not as simple as that uh, mm. is the first thing. Second thing is you said the word resilience there. For me... A lot of what we can take from poker and apply to all areas of life will come down to three things, patience, resilience, discipline. So patience is about waiting. Uh, and again, very uh, apt for sales. It's about, you know, mm. not piling into the first prospect. Yep. It's about standing back and qualifying prospects. And anyone who's sold anything and then played poker will understand that that principle of just waiting for the right hand, mm -hmm. you know. Um, Secondly, we talked about resilience there, which is being prepared to invest in opportunities. And sales has always, I think, again, had this kind of unique place where the rest of the world had to learn about uncertainty long after salespeople knew it sure. intuitively. Right? Mm -hmm. is, is you can be the best salesperson in the world and you can have the hottest lead and you get that person on the wrong day and you're not doing anything wrong. The result is, to a certain extent, mm -hmm. out of your control. And we all want to feel like we're the best and we can convert anybody, but at the end of the day, there's this there's this middle ground between what we do and the outcome that we can't always control. Okay, and 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 a poker player describes that in probabilistic terms. So mm -hmm. we've got a fifty percent hit rate. This this these leads here. We've got a nine percent hit rate. If you take it as a basket, whatever it is. Um, so the resilience is the ability to push push through that. All right, and as you say, sometimes greater resilience in the short term, greater return in the long term. And then this is final part actually, which is discipline. And the way that I'm talking about discipline here, and again, if you play poker, you'll know. The way that you make the way that you win money in poker is you're prepared to take a risk. The way that you make profit in poker is you're prepared to fold. You have mm. to be prepared to fold your bad hands. And there's this really interesting thing in our society in the 20th and 21st century, which is a taboo around quitting. You know, mm -hmm. I started something, I'm going to see yeah. it through. Okay, fine. If you want to see it through, you can see it through. But just understand that every moment, every hour, every ounce of effort that you spend seeing this thing through because you will not be beaten is a moment, an ounce, and an hour that you're not apportioning to this thing over here. Right. They have a much greater return on investment. And so being able to release something, especially, English phrase, throwing good money after bad, especially mm -hmm. once you've already invested in it, like when you're on the turn in a poker hand and you're $5,000 down, you know, it's that ability to go, do you know what? I've invested a lot into this, but the best thing I can do right now is let it go. Yeah. So patience, resilience, and discipline, for me, are the three skills which we can take to so many other areas. Yeah, I love what you're talking about there, because that is probably the third one that you were talking about there is probably the thing that a lot of salespeople struggle with the most, because mm. it is, if you've, uh, anybody who's watching, if you've ever managed a sales team or whatever, the hardest thing to do is to get them to 
just close opportunities and say that one ain't going to happen or, you know, I've invested enough time, even if you've invested it, because it's always like, if I just have one more, just try one more time. So, um, so, so talk to me a little bit about that, because that, that is for me is one of the hardest things for people to do is to get, is to give up as, uh, you know, per se, when they yeah. feel like you've invested a lot of time, or as you say, in your poker example, you know, maybe you're down like a lot of money. I mean, yeah. how, how do you convince yourself that, I got to walk away now. So, so, so the first thing is, by the way, uh, this is not unique to sales. This yeah. is, I mean, I, I work with drugs companies who have literally, I mean, think about it on this scale. They've invested tens of millions of dollars mm -hmm. into the production mm -hmm. of this drug, and this phenomenally profitable billion dollar company institutionally find it difficult to stop, yeah. even though literally everybody on a team thinks that they should, right? So, so this is endemic, and it's endemic because it's, I think, partly there are all, there are always deep psychological. Uh, elements to this, and by the way, they're always they're always evolutionarily advantageous. Like there are reasons why you know we're risk averse is because we want to survive, right? Mm -hmm. And what happens is our brains can't distinguish between the short term and the long term. So we want to be successful because if we're not successful, we're going to die. Unfortunately, if you want to hit your Q3 sales targets, that's not actually a good psychological habit to have, right? Mm -hmm. But I think that on top of that, with this one, with the discipline one, is we're also fighting a, a, a cultural bias that has not been helpful, and our parents have drummed it into us, and I'm using that as a metaphor, but just people saying, never give up, you know, mm. and quoting Churchill, never, 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 never give up. That's brilliant advice when the Nazis are on the other side of the channel, yeah, yeah. right? And giving up means, like, losing your entire way of life. It's less good advice <laughs> when there are 54 other prospects who you could be contacting, and male pride is stopping you from doing so. So here's, here's the, it, 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 it's this simple, really, Everything is future focused. As, as remarkable as this is, this has nothing to do with a poker player. In fact, mm -hmm. nothing that I teach it actually is poker. Mm -hmm. What I use is poker as a metaphor and a conduit for a much deeper body of knowledge, which is called decision making science. And it is, of course, the science of resource allocation. It's founded on the body of, of risk reward analysis. And basically, what it says is it literally doesn't matter how much money you've invested into a pot or a prospect or a relationship or a drug, okay? It is all about the future. So let me just construct a very, very quick, but simple, but, but, but powerful sort of thought experiment. Imagine you spent a million dollars devising this machine, right? And you're, mm -hmm. you're, you're $1,000 away from completing it. You know that, all right? I'll give you that as definite certainty. But I'll also tell you that the market has changed and this machine is going to make 50 cents profit per year from now on, okay? You know all those factors. Now, what, what, was, what is the only thing that's going to motivate you to spend that extra $1,000? It's, it's pride yeah. okay, because you want to finish this machine because you spend a million dollars on it. It's going to have a 2,000-year payback now. <laughs> uh, and there's so many people that even given all those parameters will go, well, I'm going to finish the machine because the market could change. I'm going to say, no, no, no. It's a thought experiment. The market exists. It's up in my mind. The market yeah. is not going to change. Do you really want to finish it? And people still want to finish it. And that is how powerful our desire to complete things and not be beaten is. And if you accept the premise of that thought experiment, you just go, oh, I've spent a million dollars. But it's all about the future. It's a thousand dollars more. It's going to make fifty cents a year. It is better to spend that thousand dollars doing something else. And that's like poker principles of you should never get personal. It's not about this person taking your money. You're not trying to get it back off them. Right. You just you just got to be detached, and you just got to in a, in a detached way allocate your resources in the mm -hmm. most efficient way possible. Yeah, yeah. People, I, I I agree with you. I think people struggle with the concept of sunk cost uh, uh, and about the fact that. Um, you know, that you can possibly, you know, put all your money or your effort or whatever into something. And at the end of the day, you have to walk away from that as opposed to add to it, throw money, good money after bad, as you said, you yeah. said earlier. Um, and I just think, and, and uh, you know, it, that applies to so many areas, areas in life, you know, where people, you know, continue to invest. And, and, it, and um, it, it is fascinating how powerful that concept is. Yeah. Uh, and I think, you know, <laughs> one of the things about poker, but I guess sales as well, mm -hmm. right? You know, I've never been a full-time professional salesperson. I sold for my company. Is that in poker, y you will be you will be rewired by your losses. Right. You know I mean? <laughs> when you realize that these are, these are, these, this male ego attachment to these particular hands. When I was playing, I started off as a seven-card stud player before moving like the whole world to ho hold them. And it was two pairs and three of a kind. Two pairs and three of a kind. Will make, the way that you played those two hands will make the difference between whether you'd win or lose money at seven cuts. Though. And when you look at your diary and you look at your results, because that's really important, and you go, right, holding on with these two hands when I know I'm beaten is losing me money and turning me from being a losing to a winning player. 
it, it becomes more simple. So you need to, you know, as a salesperson, keep the same kind of records and understand what kind of clients are the ones that are sucking you in when you could be you could be reallocating it to ones over here. Mm-hmm. The genius company at this, I mean, I always cite them, everyone does, but but it's true, is uh, is Google. Mm-hmm. Um, Google have curtailed 52 different brands since their inception. Think about it. Buzz, Wave, Reader, recently it's postponed, but Glass. And every time it happens, the entire tech press, literally every time, goes, they've lost it, they don't know what they're doing, you know, they've, they've, uh, they've lost their touch and all the rest of it. And Google are quietly chuckling to themselves because it means that other people don't do it because they're loss averse and they don't want to look like idiots in front of the tech press. <laughs> and every time they do it, they reallocate that money to something which is going to increase the returns. And it's brutal. Uh, you know, it takes leadership mm-hmm. is what it takes because it's about admitting that you're wrong. Um, but it's one of the secrets to creating, you know, half a trillion dollars in 17 years. Yeah, I think those are fantastic examples. I love. What are um, as uh, as we're getting towards the end of our time here? What are some other um, piece of advice you would give to somebody who is, you know, struggling with with the risk taking part of their job or their their life even? So I think it all comes down to the difference between the short term and the long term. If you, if you think about, uh, you, you know, you talked about gambling earlier on. So what's mm-hmm. happening when you're gambling? Gambling only works because in the short term you can make a profit, right? Spin mm-hmm. of the wheel, turn of the card, you can make a profit. feels fantastic. Even a whole evening in Vegas, sometimes even a whole trip to Vegas. My <laughs> girlfriend made a profit on slots, on mm-hmm. slots. Uh, that, I've never done that. Well, I, I, I love that. I've never. I've uh, my policy of going to Vegas because I'm not a gambler. But my policy has always been um, decide what amount of money you're prepared not to come back Absolutely with. Good. <laughs> Absolutely good. No, that, that's that's really crucial. In fact, I'm going to come to that. But but um, but the whole point is you can win in the short term, sure. right? But when you're gambling, you're going to lose in the long term. Mm-hmm. So when you're a professional poker player, you have to invert that. So you can lose in the short term. And by the way, sometimes you can lose night after night after night, and it's frustrating. Mm-hmm. But the long term, and these are statistically definable periods, depending on the level of volatility and all the rest of it. In poker, it's roughly about six months or 100,000 hands. Right. And over that period of time, the good days and the bad days, and the really good days and the really bad days will even each other out, just like refereeing decisions over the course of a sporting <laughs> season, right? And and then what are you left with? That skill. That's after the luck. So luck, as we call it, is uh, can open worms everywhere. Short term deviation from your long term expectation. Right. It's a short term phenomenon. Okay. Mm-hmm. So so the advice to people who are getting to grips with this thing called risk is understand the difference between short term and long term. Understand that as a human being, we are a work in progress. Okay. And about two million years ago, we first started to create something unique in the animal kingdom which were long-term goals. Mm. Dogs do not do this. They do not plan to catch the stick, <laughs> stick on Monday, catch the stick on Tuesday, and get really good at it by Thursday. Okay? <laughs> and we uniquely do that. And so, therefore, you can forgive yourself for being bad on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday because you're going to be better at it by Thursday. Okay? Or uh, there's lots of different ways that this manifests itself. We don't have time. But um, it, it could be that you forgive yourself for losing the sale on Monday and losing the sale on Tuesday and losing the sale on Wednesday because the kind of clients that you're going for are big clients who are more likely to say no, but when you get the one on Thursday, it's worth more than 100 you know, smaller guaranteed yes. Sales right. Okay, So understand that difference between the short term and long term, and that will help you be patient, be resilient, and be disciplined. Excellent. Thank you. Castor Berry, this has been really fascinating. I hope you'll come back and talk to us some more um, yeah. soon. Uh, before we go, I'd just like you to tell our viewers a little bit more about yourself, what you do, and how they can find out more about you. Sure. So, uh, as you said, I'm a, I'm a motivational speaker, for want of a better term. I've, uh, as I've been doing today, relates uh, poker concepts through the medium of uh, decision-making science to all the things that we do in life. And if you want to find out more, I'm at www.casparberry.com, with an A-R, casparberry.com. Great, Casper. It's been great. I um, really enjoyed talking to you. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeline of CRM. See you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you. So I encourage you to subscribe to salespop.net, the online sales magazine. Also subscribe to our YouTube channel and then comment. Get involved in the conversation. Love to hear what you have to say.